Hello, my name is Mark. My name is Mark. And, and we, we are students, students of Ghana Christian International High School. And we urge you all to subscribe to His Girl TV. Link in bio. Hello there, you are welcome to His Golf TV. Um, if today is your first time, uh, I would like to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Um, we are dedicated to teaching history, um, CRS government, English language, as well as uh, social studies. And so if you are new here, we would like to uh, remind you to subscribe again. Um, if you have already subscribed, we thank you very much for your support. So um, today we are looking at, um, we are still on the religious uh, reforms um, by King Josiah. Uh, in our previous discussion or lesson, we looked at the factors that uh, facilitated or that helped um, King Josiah to embark on his uh, reforms or religious uh, reforms. And we said that two major factors um, influenced King Josiah's uh, religious reforms. And one of them had to do with the, um, the decline of the Assyrian power, uh, which gave uh, Josiah that uh, freedom, uh, which enabled uh, Judah to assert her independence. And so was able to embark on, on the major uh, reforms that took place. And then we also said that um, the discovery of the Book of Law was also a very important step um, in King Josiah's uh, religious uh, reforms. And so with the, uh, with the discovery of the Book of Law by El Halkiah, the high priest, um, King, uh, of course, uh, King Josiah saw that there was a need to make a certain uh, reforms in order to uh, stop or halt any uh, disaster which was about to befall the kingdom or the nation. Now, in today's lesson, we are going to look at, and by the way, in case you missed that um, lesson, I'll include the link in the, in the description under this video, and, that, and I'll tag it as RPK, that is the relevant previous knowledge, so that you can um, um, uh, check and then go back and read that um, for a particular story. Now, in today's lesson, we are looking at the, 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 the various uh, reforms that King Josea implemented or, or brought about, okay? And that is basically what we are going to look at. In our previous lesson, we looked at the, at the factors that helped, or of course, that helped um, Josiah in the, in the religious uh, reforms. So now we are going to look at the, the religious uh, reforms uh, proper, the individual uh, reforms that uh, King Josiah uh, brought about in uh, Judah and Israel at this point in time. So that is basically uh, for going to be our lesson objective. So we will look at um, King Josiah's uh, religious uh, reforms in Judah or Jerusalem. And bear in mind at this point, the kingdom had been divided into two. So um, those in the northern part of the kingdom was known as Judah. Uh, sorry, those in the southern part of the kingdom was known as Judah or Jerusalem. Whilst those in Israel, uh, those in the northern kingdom, were also known as Israel or Samaria. So you may hear me use them interchangeably. Sometimes I'll say Jerusalem, sometimes I'll say Sam uh, uh, Samaria, and sometimes too I'll say Judah, and sometimes I'll say Israel. So you should know the difference. The northern kingdoms were known as Israel or Samaria, whilst the southern kingdom was known as Judah or Jerusalem. So we will look at the various uh, uh, reforms that took place in Judah that's the um, southern kingdom, as well as uh, in Israel, of course, that's the northern kingdom. And also, all these two kingdoms had um, different kings that ruled them, all right? Then we also look at the effect, the effect of King Josiah's uh, religious uh, reforms, how it affected the life of the people of Israel. So let's uh, begin with our lesson objectives for um, today. So our first objective is for us to be uh, able to identify King Josiah's religious reforms in um, Judah and Israel or Samaria. So the two um, kingdoms, what did uh, Josiah um, change or reformed, uh, you know, in the course of the religious life of the people. So we should be able to identify uh, some of the 
uh, religious uh, reforms initiated by King Josiah, both in Judah, the southern kingdom, as well as Israel, um, the northern kingdom. And then the last one will be for us to be able to um, state the effect okay, of King Josiah's uh, religious reform. So what were some of the effects of King Josiah's uh, religious uh, uh, reforms? What effect did it have on the, uh, the people of Israel and, and, and the nation as a whole? So let's begin with that. But before we begin with that, we need to read our Bible. And I've told you that the Bible is your textbook as a CRF student. And therefore, we will go into the Bible and first begin with the religious reforms undertaken by King Josiah in Judah or Jerusalem. That is where he himself, King Josiah, was king. He was a king in Judah. And so we look at the reformation or the religious reforms that took place in his place. And then when we finish, we will go and look at that of Samaria as well. Now, we will take our Bible verse from um, 2 Kings, okay, 2 Kings uh, chapter 23, verse 1 to 14. Then we also look at uh, verse 21. Then we also look at verse 24. So this is going to be our Bible text. So let's go into our Bible. Um, you can have a CRS, uh, RSV, the Revised Standard Version. If you have it, you can open and read alongside with me. In case you don't have your Bible also with you, I'm going to read with you. Um, this text. Then, when we finish the reading, we will come to we will come back with the um, summarization of everything that we have said in the Bible. Good. So let's go in there and look at Second Kings chapter twenty-three, verse one to fourteen and twenty-one and twenty-four. Okay. So you are welcome. Let's take a look at Second Kings chapter twenty-three. Um, verse 1 to 14, and then we also look at um, verse 21 and 24. And we are looking at the reforms that King Josiah uh, initiated in Judah. So we are not focusing on Samaria <coughs> or Israel, but we are looking at Judah first. Then when we finish, we will go to Samaria and Israel. So let's begin with the reading. Then the, king sent, then the king sent, and all the elders of uh, Judah and Jerusalem were gathered to him. And the king went up. And the king went up to the house of the Lord, and with him all the men of Judah, and in all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests and the, and the prophets, all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the house of the Lord. So this is when King Josiah, when he uh, wanted to start with the, with the reforms, he had to read the, the words in the book of law or the covenant book to all the people, all the elders. And this was to, you know, to, to, to let them know that this is what uh, was a stick. Because bear in mind that at this point, the book had already been read to King Josiah himself. Remember when um, Shephan and um, Hezekiah, when they uh, discovered the book, it was only read to King Josiah. So the, the, the other people had not seen the book. The other priests and the prophets had not seen the book or even heard of the words in the book. So there was a need for King Josiah to read the book to them, to all their hearing, okay, and let them aware and, and, and I mean, and make them aware that this is what he was about to do. Good. And the king, so verse 3, And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandment and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of this uh, covenant that were written in this book. And all the people joined in the covenant. So Josiah and the people signed a covenant to God that they were going to undertake and obey all that was written in the book of law. Okay, good. So let's read verse 4. Let's look at 4. Now, and the king commanded Helkiah, the high priest, and the priestess of the second, of the second order, and the keepers of the threshold, to bring out, the, out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels made for Baal, for 
Asherah and for all the hosts of heaven and burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron and carried their ashes to Bethel. So this was the first major uh, reforms undertaken by King uh, Josiah. He ordered uh, Helkiah because at this point we have already indicated that uh, during the time of Manasseh and Co, or even before um, King Josiah ascended to the throne of Judah, Israel was still worshipping uh, pagan gods. So they had filled um, the temple with gods you know, of other nations. Example of such gods that we have seen here is Baal and Asherah. And so the first thing that King Josia had to do was to bring out the images or the vessels made for these gods in the temple. He brought all of them out and he ordered that they all be burned into what ashes. So the first thing that he did was to bring out all these uh, gods, Baal and Asherah, and then ordered that all of them should be what burnt. Let's move on to five. And he deposed the idolatrous uh, priest whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places at the cities of Judah and ran about Jerusalem. Those who, those also who burned incense to Baal, to the sun and the moon and the, cons and the constellation and all the hosts of the heavy. So he also deposed, he sacked all the idolatrous priests who were in the temple, who were responsible for uh, the worshipping of these gods, Baal and Asherah. He also deposed all of them. He sacked all of them from the temple. Now six, and he brought out the, the Asherah from the house of the Lord outside Jerusalem to the brook Kedron and burned it at the brook Kedron and beat it to dust and cast the dust of it upon the graves of the common people, upon the graves of the common people so the the image of asherah or the god asherah was bent uh outside around kidron area there and then he sprinkled the dust on the graves that's those who were dead uh on the graves of the common people let's look at seven and he broke down the house of the male cult prostitutes which were in the house of the lord where the women wove hangings for the asherah so there were certain things, I mean, there were this whole um, practice is known as cult prostitution, whereby uh, people had to, people went into the temple uh, of the Lord where they had indiscriminate um, sex everywhere, you know, uh, with themselves. And so you could have uh, cult prostitutions, either being male or female, all of them were in there. And that was what can uh, what do you call it? Uh, Prophet Hosea, his wife was into. He was a court prostitute. So they were ha actually having a pagan um, practice whereby they have indiscriminate sex in a temple, and to appease, of course, the God who is in charge of that. And so he had to also do away because he broke down the house, that area that was uh, given to the prostitutes. He had to destroy all of them. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and, and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense uh, with Geba uh, to, uh, from uh, Geba to Beersheba. And he broke down the high uh, places of the gates that were at the entrances of the gate of Joshua, uh, the governor of the city, which were on, which were on once left at the gate of the city. Let's move on tonight. However, uh, sorry about that. Um, so let's go to nine. Let's go to nine. Okay. So, however, the priest of the high place did not come up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they ate unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, uh, Topheth, which is in the valley of the sons of Hinnom, uh, that no one might burn his son or his daughter as an offering to a mullet. Now, um, there was also another religious practices that was being um, practiced among the Jewish people, and that is the, um, the sacrificing of their 
um, children or sons or daughters to the god Molech. So there was a god called Molech, and this god, they had to sacrifice their sons and daughters to him. And so he had to destroy all these gods as well. And then if you look at 11, and he removed the horses that the kings of Judah had dedicated to the sun at the entrance of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Naphamilk, uh, Naphamilk uh, the chamberlain, which was uh, in the prince's uh, precinct. And he burned the chariots of the sun with um, fire. So there were some horses which had also uh, been dedicated to the sun at the entrance. So at the entrance of the temple, you could see these gods, uh, these horses in there. He had to do away with all of them. Now 12. And the altars on the roof of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the kings of Judah had made, and the altars which Manasseh had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, he pulled down and broke in pieces and cast the dust of them into the brook Kidron. So all these things which King Manasseh, the apostate, had done, he, he, I mean, he destroyed all of them. Good. Let's move on to um, 13. The last two verses. Oh, my. My, this one is giving me a problem. Good. Let's look at the 13. And the king defiled the high places that were east of Jerusalem to the south of the Mount of uh, Corruption, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had built for Ashtoreth, uh, the abomination of the Sidonians, and for uh, Chemush, uh, the abomination of Moab, and for Melcom, and the abomination of the Ammonites. And then he also broke in pieces the pillar, and cut down the Asherim, and filled their places with the bones of men. So these were some of them that he did. Now let's jump to 21 and, and 24, and then we will look at what also happened there now in 21 in 21 uh he says so we have 21 and the king commanded all the people keep the passover to the lord your god as it is written in this book of the covenant so it was written in the book of covenant that they should also keep the passover uh, because they were supposed to uh, observe the passover but at this point the people were not doing it they because they they were worshipping idol gods. And so it was uh, Josiah in his uh, reformation who reintroduced the Passover to the people of Israel, be uh, Judah, because they had you know, stopped observing the Passover. Now, 24. Let's look at 24. Let's look at 24. Uh, 24. Behave, behave. Let's look at 24. Move to 24. Okay, 24 came. Let's go slow down. Slowly. I don't want to miss 24, so let's go slowly. Okay, 24 is here. Okay, so we have 24. Moreover, Josiah put away the mediums and the widows and the teraphims and the idols and all the abominations that were seen in the land of judah and in jerusalem that he might establish the words of the law which were written in the book that helkiah the priest found in the house of the lord so he also had to do away with all the mediums and with us uh, divination and all those uh, things and also he had to do with all of them so basically these were the the reforms that king josea implemented in um, Judah, his own place. All right, so let's go and look at the um, the summary of these uh, reforms on the slides. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, the, the summary of what we just um, read, okay? Good. So the first thing was that uh, Josiah abolished uh, the Canaanite Baal uh, worship. So Baal was for the people of Canaan. 
the Assyrian court and their deities, all right? For example, uh, the worship of the god called Melkon within Judah was abolished. So that was the first thing that we talked about. Now, he also cleared the temple from all foreign objects uh, that were connected with the worship of their gods. So, for example, the pillar of Asherah, the horses and the chariots well, that were connected with the worship of the sun god were all bent in Judah. Again, the practices of sacred cult prostitution was abolished and the cult uh, prostitutes were also driven out of the temple uh, and their dwelling places were also um, demolished. So you, you could recall that we said all those things was done by King Josiah. So these were the just the, um, uh, the summary. Now he also demolished the high places and the altars. All right, and then he also uh, priests of pagan gods were also deposed. So he deposed the priests of pagan gods. Good. So now that we okay, we still have some on still in Judah. All right. So child sacrifice was also abolished. You can also recall we said that child sacrifices were was also abolished, and one of the for valley of Hinnom made to the god Molek, and he also defiled um, Tophet, uh, where the human sacrifices were um, performed, all right? And then we also said that all occultism um, practices, such as consultation of mediums, um, wizards, um, fortune tellers, divination, necromancy, soothsaying, and so on, were all abolished. So the consultation, that is like, like more or less uh, witchcraft, uh, fortune tellers, people who you would visit and they will tell you your future, and divination, divination almost like fortune tellers, and then necromancy, whereby um, the the calling of the dead spirit. So if your your relative dies, you could go and call the the spirit and ask him questions. All right, and then also soothsaying. All those were also abolished. Then again, he revived the Passover uh, and reorganized its what celebration good and then the last one was that there was he also centralized the worship of yahweh in jerusalem so these were the religious uh, reforms that king josiah initiated um in judah so when you are asked anywhere to uh, mention or list any of these uh, religious reforms you should be able to do that good let's take a look at that that of the religious reforms that King Josiah initiated in Israel, that is Samaria. So after he had done what he was doing in, in Judah, where he was, he then moved up to the um, northern kingdom to also um, change um, certain things over there. So let's go into our Bible and look at uh, the, the reforms that were also initiated in Judah, is, I mean in Israel. This one is very, very short. So we will read Second Kings chapter 23, verse 15 to 20, only five verses, and we are done. Right. Okay, so let's read um, Second Kings chapter 23, verse 15 um, to 20, and then we will look at the reforms that King Josiah embarked on in Israel, that is In Samaria. So let's start. Moreover, the altar of the altar at Bethel, the high place erected by Jeroboam, the son of uh, Nebat, uh, who made Israel to sin, that altar with the high place he pulled down and he broke in pieces its stones, crushing them to uh, dust. Also, he burned the Asherah. So the images of Asherah and Ko were all burnt here. And as uh, Josiah turned, he saw the tombs there on the mount and he sent and took the bones out of the tombs and burned them upon the altar and defiled it according to the word of the lord which the men of god proclaimed who he who had predicted these things so you know the tombs of the men whom to king Josiah uh, made israel to sin against god he ordered that his tomb be desecrated so they went in there took the bodies from the tomb and then burn them on the ashes uh, of course to charge them that they were the ones 
responsible for leading Israel to sin. 17. Then he said, What is yonder a monument that I see? And the men of the city told him, It is the tomb of the man of God who came from Judah and predicted these things which you have done against the altar at Bethel. And he said, Let him be. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet who came out of Samaria. So you recall that in the days of uh, Hosea, Amos, and Co, um, God sent some prophets to warn the Israelites of what they were doing. And so when he saw the tombs of those people, he did not touch because those uh, prophets were not responsible for what had happened in um, is, uh, Israel. Now, 19, and all the shrines also of the high places that were in the cities of Samaria, which kings of Israel had made, uh, provoking the Lord to anger, uh, Josiah removed. So all the high places, he removed them. He did to them according to all that he had done at Bethel. And then he also, he slew all the priests of the high places who were there uh, upon the altars and burned the bones of men upon them. Then he returned to Jerusalem. So these were some of the things that King Josiah uh, reformed or changed in um, Israel or Samaria. All right, so let's go back and look at the, the summary of these uh, reforms. Okay, so now let's take a look at the the summary of the various uh, reforms undertaken by uh, Josiah in Israel. So the first one, uh, we are saying that he extended, we already know that. Now the altar at the high place in Bethel established by Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, was destroyed. Then he also destroyed the tomb of wicked men who made Israel sin. You also remember something like that. And then all the shrines in the cities of Samaria were crushed to dust by um, Josiah. Uh, you also remember something like that. Then he killed the idolatrous priest serving at the altar of Baal and defiles the places by burning uh, dead human bones at every altar. Good. And then the image of Asherah was also what bent. And so these were some of the the reforms undertaken by King Josiah in Israel or Samaria. Good. So now let's go and look at the effect of um, these uh, reforms that was undertaken by uh, Josiah. So these uh, reforms, we can say, was in the religious life of the people. Uh, it had nothing to do with political or economic uh, reforms, but basically about the religious life of the people, what the people were actually uh, worshipping. So the effects of the religious uh, uh, these uh, religious uh, reforms. And anytime there is a reform, there are bad or good one effects. So let's take a look at the positive effects of some of these uh, reforms. So one, the religious uh, reform ensured religious and political independence of Judah and Israel from Assyrian control. You are also aware that the, the people of Judah were under Assyria. And so as, as some of these gods that were being worshipped were from Assyria, and so uh, Josiah able to do away with all these gods meant that the people were free uh, independently. And then also with the and also with the reforms, the influence of Assyrian culture and uh, religious uh, practices on Judah and Israel also came to um, an end uh, because Assyrians. You know, they were under the Assyrian rule, and therefore the Assyrians forced them to do things that they didn't want to do. And so with these uh, reforms, that Assyrian culture and religious influence in the life of Judah and Israel also came to an end. All right. And then also uh, Yahwehism was also purified as a result of the centralization of the worship in Jerusalem. So he also decided that they all come to Jerusalem to worship. Uh, during their time for worship. So Yahweh, or the worship of Yahweh, was also purified because there was a centralization of the worship of Yahweh in Jerusalem because he didn't want the situation whereby people will be uh, worshipping outside 
there. So let's look at the negative. There were also some negative effects with regards to the, the religious uh, reforms. One was uh, due to the centralization of all worship in Jerusalem, the countryside priests lost their jobs, and this brought about dissatisfaction. So the countryside, the, the, the priests uh, that were in the villages, lost their job because uh, in those days before King Jose or before the, uh, the reforms, people were, uh, people were worshipping in their various uh, temples individually in the areas, in the remote areas. But Jose's uh, reformation came to centralize the worship of Yahweh only in Jerusalem, the temple, as all the priests that were in the, um, in the countryside lost their job because of that. And then also it led to the division among priests in Jerusalem on one side and also um, the priests uh, on the countryside or on also another. So, you, you know, the priests on the countryside were not happy, but those in Jerusalem will be happy or the capital will be happy because more people will come in there and they're going to get a lot of money from that. All right. And then also the last one, soon after the death of Josiah, the people went back to their old practices and that is very sad soon after the death of Josiah the people went back to their old ways and in our next lesson we will look at the death of Josiah and then we will draw the curtains down on uh, Josiah's religious uh, reform so with this we will bring our discussions to an end and I am sure that you have been educated um, today so you watch out for the death of King Josiah how King Josiah died and with that, I would include a video, a video footage of the story of King Josiah with the death of King Josiah. So don't miss out on that lesson. Uh, but before that, let's try our hands on this work. Uh, outline any five uh, religious reforms of King Josiah in Judah. So in Judah, outline five of them. And then also state any three effects of King Josiah's uh, religious uh, reforms in to, uh, I mean, in the whole of in the whole of the kingdom. All right, good. Thank you for your time. Subscribe to our channel. Have a nice day. Bye bye.